So, this is going to be part 2 of the MSG Kalabuki Lucifer's Wing. So, this part, I'm going to be covering the Unicorn unit itself. Now, this guy doesn't have that much clear blue, not much more, like way less than the Harpy. But I have to say, this thing does look pretty majestic for a horse or a unicorn. And yeah. It's armored all over, although uh, over here in the back, it's some. Of, it's like some of the uh, IBO styles that have the uh, rear armor left out. But I have to say, this guy does look pretty cool. Although it doesn't have that much clear blue, like there's only here for the uh, for the bib, and then some exposing of the gaps of the armor over here, and then also the tails are obviously clear blue. Uh, yeah, it, it looks a bit plain if you ask me since it only has this big splotch of clear yellow on the uh, on the visor Which you can actually take off and then you actually have a pair of eyes in there uh, Or a visor for the uh, for the unicorn. So Yeah, it's really not that much special Of course you can see the hands over here and I did an oopsies when I'm transforming this guy since I actually broke the peg of uh, this piece of armor that goes into the hand but it it sticks on pretty well with blue tack. It is a very, very light piece, so it doesn't really matter that much. But I'm gonna be displaying this guy in mobile armor mode anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be pegging that piece into there that often. So need, need blue for the knee armor for the uh, for this whole splotch over here, and then you do have the gray for the frame and then the hooves. The hooves themselves do look good. And yeah, it feels like way more plain to me because it doesn't have that many clear parts. It isn't really that remarkable to me in any ways. But the one thing that I do like is that it has actual footrests on the saddle over here, which the saddle you can actually take off and have a peg over here. So it could potentially peg some uh, high grade kits into here. So. Yeah, with a few adjustments, you could do that. I think this is just the regular three millimeter peg, so it will not matter. You can slip the feet into the footrest, and also there's the handles over here on this rubber. Now, this piece does kind of come off just because it isn't really pegged that security into here, so you have to constantly readjust. So, yeah, these are on the flimsy rubber pieces, so. You can only really adjust it when the model can mount it onto the horse is actually holding it. So there's really nothing too special. It can move here. And of course the rubber piece can move. And then the handles are kind of on the double hinge. So it can move in and out here. And then it can move here. Like so. And then the entire head is busy to plug onto the neck. So it can move no problem. And then the neck itself it can move up and down. This bib over here can move in and out. The front feet can move in and out like so. And then they can move inside of the joints over there. Then you do have a bend over here. It's a single jointed bend, but it can bend all the way. And then also it does have a slight bend at the thigh over there. And then the hooves, they can move in and out like so. And then they can move in and out at the hoof itself. So yeah, you could do some diamond poses in the front. And then for some reason that this piece over here thing the entire thing can actually move but i don't think horses for that matter actually have that kind of a joint so yeah, let us move on and then the rear armor over here they are on a few hinges so there's a poly cap in the armor piece over here there is a hinge here and then there's a hinge over here and then a hinge at the actual armor piece over here and the rotation thanks to the poly cap and then the armor piece over here that holds this armor guard over here they actually rotate up and they're on the poly cap so they can flap in and out so let's just move that off to the side for now since it's gonna get in the way of the legs so the rear legs they can move in and out like so and then they can basically shift in and out thanks to the bend over here make sure you tuck the white piece of armor inside and then they do have a double joint at the back and then the hooves themselves kind of similar to the front ones and then the tails they can just move up and down with the unit over here and then they can move in and out they can move in and out like that and then the tail fins over here can rotate out so there's basically just an adequate amount of articulation for a unicorn like this so yeah you can pull off some pretty fierce poses with the unicorn and yep the mounting unit does work on Gunpla if you remove the saddle and the footrests. And now I will show you how to transform this guy 
into the Centurion Mounting Unit, or as I like to call it that. But I will show you guys what this looks like. So what you need to do is to take off the head with the bib, and then take off the saddle. And then what you need to do is to take off the front legs, and then the rear pieces of armor separated from the mounting piece over here. And then you take off the rear legs here, leaving the clamp on there. And then take off the rear armor mounting units over here. And then finally take off the side pieces over here. So take them off from the middle, split them apart. And then you will completely discard the center pieces over here. So just take them off and leave them off to the side. And then now you bring in a custom adapter over here. And then plug it on with the side like this. So plug it on to where the head was. And then basically reconnect everything this the way it was taken off back to the body. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. So after you've reconnected everything, you will have this. Now take the head units over here and then take off the side pieces like so. Take off the bib as well. And then actually leave the V pieces on here. And then reconnect everything back onto this adapter. And also, yeah, you need to discard the handle inside of the bib. And then what you need to do with the mounting unit is that you basically take off the saddle and the footrests and plug it right back onto the body so that it will connect to the back of anything you try to put in it and stabilize it. So there's really nothing to say about this just because it is basically the horse or the unicorn with the, without the head and basically having a cavity that you can put any MS girl, MS frame in there but I'm going to be doing it on this guy and here I have it. Now I basically just stick him in and that is it. Now yeah this is basically the Centurion support unit right here. Now. If you have any other kit or if you have an MS girl, you should take off the backpack and have the mounting unit connect into it. But yeah, the hole is too large since this guy wasn't really made in the customization age of Gunpla, which means when the Universal Standard came into play and when Bill Fighters came into play. So the mounting unit isn't really going to do much for this guy, but it's staying in there pretty well. Now I cannot guarantee that every single Gunpla can fit inside here since we do have some with absolutely thick shins. So yeah, not all Gunpla kits could be mounted inside here but what I really want to do could be done. So that's basically the Centurion support unit. I wonder if you could mount the Extreme Gundam inside here. So now I'm going to be showing you guys how to transform this guy into the humanoid form. Now what you firstly need to do is to take every single thing off up until its base frame is left. So I'm going to be back when I do so because it's basically the exact same steps as we did to transform this guy into the support unit. Now two things you need to be aware of in this separation. First of all, you do not take off the legs from the clamp. You take the clamp with it. Now I would, oh, okay, yeah, because the clamp is pegged into the poly cap over here and it's very, very tight. So take off everything before you try to take off the clamp and reattach the frame piece if you just so happened to uh, take it out from the transformation. To do that for the other one. Now the second one is that yeah, first of all let me take off the adapter for the centurion form and then yeah basically in here you see how we took off the gray vents from the uh, from the transformation into the centurion form. Now what you want to do now 
is to peg it back in. But if you're transforming this from the unicorn form, then you do not need to take these off. But then you need to take off the hexagons in here. So I need some mechanical help, but you guys know what to do. Grab these out and then be done with it. So now what you need to do for the frame is to basically separate it from each other. So you separate the limb units over here like so and then you tear this thing off and then tear the rear unit off. And then what you want to do for this unit over here is to just take everything off and make sure the five dots are in the bottom and just flip them around like so. And then for the lower unit, what you want to do is to basically rotate these up like so and then rotate this and then rotate the polycap. And then you want to rotate these downwards. And then you bring back the frame with the bulging stuff over here. And then you plug this thing onto the second slot over here. Make sure the polycap is facing towards you. And then peg this thing onto the bottom like so. Adjust it if necessary. You bring in the head and the neck and you detach the head from it. And then you detach the neck from this joint over here. Leave the V's in there. And then you flip out the peg over here. It's kind of hard because it is very, very tight. Flip it all the way. Rotate these V's down. And then what you need to do is to plug this piece, which is an extra piece that you have to build, onto the peg right here. Adjust it if necessary. And then bring in the tail piece right here. It also has another peg that you need to flip out. Flip out all the way. And then rotate this piece up like so. And then what you want to do for this piece over here is to plug this polycap into the top over here. And then this piece, you plug the peg onto the bottom like so. So sorry, I had to I plugged it in the wrong direction. So the pegs, so the polycap with the pegs over here it should face towards the back. So that when you plug in the tail pieces over here, nothing will collide with each other. And then basically bring in the neck, and then plug it right onto here to basically form the front armor. And then you flip this thing toward the back, and I would take off the wings just for Clarence. So you need to bring in the headgear and the bib over here. And then you basically, and then you plug this hole into the V's right here. Same goes for the other. And then plug the bib in to the uh, top hole over here and then flip it right down. Now, what you need to do to prep the head is to basically open up the mouth, remove this piece over here, and you're done. Now, this reveals the visor in here. I paint the visor gold. And then basically plug it onto the polycap over here. It may be a bit finicky just because everything is in the way, but yeah, you'll get there eventually. Now, with that out of the way, this is a pain in the ass, so there is one point that you need to keep in mind. Now, the polycap, or the piece over here, needs to be angled upwards, so as for the bib to not get in the way. And then next up, we need to bring in these pieces of armor, and then you need to plug it onto the back, like so. They tell you to adjust the polycap, but you could adjust it when the stuff is pegged onto it. So this acts as the back skirt. And then you need to grab these pieces of armor, these huge pieces of armor, and then you need to basically rotate it toward the side and then rotate it like so, and rotate like that. So that is basically what you need to do. Same goes for the other one. So extend out all the joints, rotate it towards the side, that side, and then you're good to go. You, so plug it right back into the bottom piece over here. 
and then we can move on to the limbs now so what you want to do for the hands over here is to basically rip this kneecap off gently just because I broke the other one and then you basically want to flip everything up so that it is flush with each other and then flip out the hand like so and then reattach the kneecap over here to form one part of the forearm armor and then you need to tip the uh, shoulder armor downwards and then flip out that and then yeah basically you form the shoulder armor same goes for the other one so I'm not going to show that in the camera and then over here you want to flip the entire leg down on the double joint and basically just extend the joints over here and don't bend it flip the joint down over here and then you basically want to flip this 90 degrees point this up and then you have this kind of a mechanism over here now I need some mechanical help to flip out the peg that is stored in here and then you plug it onto here to basically stop this top joint from functioning and then you flip out the feet from the hooves now same goes for the other one and then finally for the side pieces you basically extend them and rotate them 90 degrees so that the peg is pointing down bring in the main body and now for the legs you will want to attach these clamps onto here which is going to be a pain in the ass because everything needs to be precise and then you peg in the pieces of side armor into the thighs or I don't know what you call it but the holes here and have them diagonally facing out single surveil one and then the arms is straightforward enough just peg them into these holes right here so I'm going to be doing the same for the other side and I'm going to be right back so here we have the unicorn unit in its humanoid form and I have to say it looks weird to say the least it looks as I said it has a bib over here and then the lower armor is armed up and not armed up at the same time because you have this heavy armor in the waist but then you have this lack of armor in the thighs but then you come up down here and you have these two gigantic slices of ham over here and basically it's just it just looks very very weird and the process is it's just grueling it's agonizing just because nothing really wants to work with me especially the head now that i know that the piece needs to face diagonally up and believe me if you think my explanation is confusing it's 10 times as confusing for me because i have to look at the instructions i didn't want to mess anything up and you need it's basically take apart and put back together so yeah it's I don't know, the process is just grueling to say the least. But the results, I don't think the results are even that, that glamorous. It, like, especially when the, when the actual humanoid form head with the unicorn Gundam visor is actually just inside of the unicorn head. So, it just looks all round weird. And especially, you do not have any chest armor over here. And you just basically have this phallic subarm of the TR6 sticking into the bib and basically feeding you something that I cannot say on TV. But, it... <sighs> It doesn't have any redeeming features for the process that you had to go through to transform this guy into the humanoid form. Now for articulation, the head is extremely limited. It's limited to the ball joint inside of the head. So you're not going to get anything until you pop this thing off, which is, oh my god, completely, oh my god, I, can't, I don't know how to describe it. Now the arms, they can go out that far, like so. And then they can rotate at the base joint and they can rotate over here. So basically two points of rotation. And then the arms, they can rotate at the forearm. Basically the same as the harpy over here because it's exactly the same frame. 
And then the wings over here, they can move like so. They cannot really flip in and out due to, ex to the extreme amount of things getting in the way. These can still rotate out, so nothing really special there. The wrists are on pegs, so you cannot wiggle them. And then the skirts can move on a multitude of joints. The legs, they can go forwards like this. Cannot go back and go out almost all the way, but the arms can get in the way. Rotation everywhere. So a rotation at the thigh, a rotation at the shin. And then they can basically bend on one joint, but it's decent enough. And then the side pieces armor have the same articulation as before. I kind of separated them. But then they also can come out for revealing the clear blue pieces. It's kind of on the edge, isn't it? And then the feet, they can just move forwards and back, side to side, and rotate all the way. So that's basically the articulation of the unicorn humanoid form. Now there are no weapons on its body, so yeah, this is just what you get if you display the unicorn humanoid form separately. So before I finish up this part, let's bring in the harpy for a comparison. So the unicorn is actually taller than the harpy in humanoid form. But I would have to say, even though the unicorn is more armored up, I still prefer the harpy. Now if this guy is taller than the harpy, then North American type Gundam shouldn't even stand up against it because the head of the Gundam cannot even reach the waist. So that's just how large this thing is. So now, that's it for part two of the Lucifer's Wing review.